NFT shorts, of course. You know what? We're back at it again. It's your host again. Look, today what we're going to do is congratulate everybody who's been part of this team. What we're doing right now is we're going to go cross chain. We've been doing it for weeks. We've been doing it for months. We haven't necessarily been talking about it, but now we're going to get all the way into it, starting with this one. All right. Of course, if it's your first time here, you know the situation. I want you to share the video with your friends. Check out some of the playlists as well. You might like what's happening. Of course, join the Patreon. As I always say, and there's a reason for that. You'll find out when you get there, right? So the crypto space is very interesting these days. I mean, it's pretty exciting, the gaming aspect of things. We've got so many games. We've got games coming out with new iterations of themselves or second installments. Uh, today, what we're going to do is we're going to dive into a game that actually has multiple layers. It's kind of cool. We're definitely on the Matic side. So for those of you who are not on the Polygon network and you don't have a wallet yet, or you're just not familiar, go ahead and get yourself set up. It's pretty simple to do. Stick around to the channel right here, NFT Shorts, because I will be going into more of these chains, checking out some of these games, and essentially expressing how you're gonna be able to do it. If you're coming from perhaps the Ethereum side, or maybe you're coming from the Binance Smart Chain side, we've got you covered, all right? Stick around. I believe that the year 2021 and the year 2022 are the years for gaming. Of course, it's going to change. It's going to grow. More and more people are going to adopt cryptos. That's completely understandable. This is the biggest hype right now. We're going to see some in the future. It might be FOMO. It might not be FOMO. There may be tons of games. Like I'll give a great example. I think some of the more popular or successful games, crypto games, blockchain games, play to earn, GameFi, D-gaming, all of this stuff you're gonna see a lot of these models repeated because people want in. I mean, look at how many DEXs there are. Just something like that. Imagine how many versions of fill in the blank with the game you like there could be in the future, especially if it's successful and if the model is simple. I've got a ton on my mind. We'll talk about it again. Let's get into it. All right, so what we're gonna get into today is a game platform ecosystem called Poly Pulsar. They definitely got the part Poly correct on this one. There are multiple games to play here, quite simple games, and there is actually some type of development going on and upgrades happening in the background bit by bit, right? So what this is essentially is it's a hybrid gaming platform, right? And it's integrated within this yield farming aspect, right? So you can take the tokens that you buy and play the game, the first game, and then you earn tokens, a different kind of token, and then you put it into the second game. And essentially you can stake these tokens and earn passive tokens it's actually a very interesting ecosystem one of the cool things about it is the fact that they've managed to find a way to limit selling pressure okay once you buy in and you have let's just say even one matic in your account there's so much that you can do because the transaction fees are significantly lower than those of binance smart chain i'm going to say it again i know it's very clear the transaction fees on the Polygon network right now, especially for this game, they're so low that with one Matic at the time of recording, which costs a little over one US dollar, can be used for multiple days. I mean, days and days, I mean, 60 different transactions. You still got some Matic left. It's actually very cool. Now, of course, off the bat, you're going to see the home. Then you're going to see trade, just like any other decks. You're going to get to farms and different pools. You got the pools here. You got the interstellar pools. Now, the first mode essentially is Bounty Hunter. Very cool, very simple. All of it's very cool and very simple. You jump into Bounty Hunter and you have to first use your G pull tokens to buy a Bounty Hunter, right? You could choose 10x or 100x. It's essentially the same. You are just upping the amount that you're spending and also upping the amount of rewards. If you want to take it slow, then you could just use the smaller times 10. If you want to go all the way in and go a little deeper to get more rewards, you can do times 100, but it's essentially the same. It just scales up or scales back depending on what multiple. Since we're in this current layer, what we're going to do is click layer project here and then select Pulsar Gamma Polygon. All right, we're not doing alpha, we're not doing beta, we're doing Pulsar Gamma, and that's why we have this token called G Pull. All right now once we're in here we're gonna want to play bounty hunter to start all right you could check out your profile and take a look at your bounty hunter quickly take a look see your profile your statistics the battles you've won the missions you've lost maybe failed and essentially the total bounty you've collected right then of course you're gonna go to the corresponding missions for that game called bounty hunter and you can choose at level one you don't have as much choice but the higher you get the more you play the more times you honestly lose your bounty hunters because they will die 
and you will have to buy them again. But the more you do this is, of course, the higher you rank and the higher your level and such, which means, of course, the more missions you can actually go on. It's kind of cool. And there are little stories after each battle, so you can read them. But I assure you, there are animations on the way and there's even more in development. So I'm actually very interested and I've got my eye on this here Poly Pulsar ecosystem. I'll tell you why in a minute. Now, I'd also say that you want to take a look at some of their documentation because looking at these documents, essentially, you're going to learn a lot more about Gamma Poly Pulsar. You'll check out the odds to see essentially what you're up against. You're going to also be able to get the contract addresses for GPOL, which is Gamma Pulsar and GBNT, Gamma Bounty Token. Upon creating hunters and pets, it will prompt you to actually go take a look at the documentation. So I definitely recommend you do that for yourselves. So what you're doing is essentially you're putting in your G pool to buy this here bounty hunter. You're playing missions, perhaps spending G pool to get in. But what you're earning in return is GBNT. Very interesting. They've got a couple of tokens here in their own ecosystem. So it essentially, like I said, it limits the selling pressure. But the reason why I wanted to talk about why I've got my eye on this ecosystem, it's because what they're planning on doing is kind of a, I don't even want to say planning because they're already doing it. They're in some way a gaming launch pad or a token launch pad because they integrate some of their missions and the rewards rewards with other cryptos. It's pretty interesting. You might find some different cryptos you would never have even imagined together in this gaming ecosystem. So they are creating a platform where they can also introduce new cryptos to the world. Very interesting. I do like it. To me, that's a power play. So let's figure out exactly how to buy GPOL. Where do we go to buy GPOL? Well, right here, if you click trade, you could see right here, there's the exchange for GPOL, GBNT, as well as liquidity with GPOL and Rapmatic plus GBNT and Rapmatic. So you've got four options here, but let's just say we're trying to actually buy GPOL because we want to get into this game. Click that. It's going to open up the new window, which is going to take you to polycat.finance. Here, you want to make sure that you select this gear icon and change the slippage to 9%. That's because there is an 8% tax, okay? So of the 8% for GPOL, 7% will be burned and 1% will be reflected to the reward pool of the leaderboard. For GBNT, there's also an 8% tax. All of the GBNT tax, which is also 8%, will be burned. Now, some of the NFT Shorts community members are really keen on games that are super simple to play. I mean, they can do it in the background while working on other things in the office. Let's say just kind of semi-passively. Well, this is one of those games. Yeah, you kind of click to win and it is definitely randomized and they do use Chainlink for the randomization, but it's still rewarding in its own way because it's so integrated with this aggregator here, this yield farm. So you've got everything kind of all wrapped up into one. For anybody who's unfamiliar with a yield farm aggregator like this, this game is gonna actually help you to understand the crypto space even more. It's got a learning curve, it surely does. And I'm telling you, it looks intimidating for somebody who's just coming in. Cause when I first saw it, I was like, I don't even know where to begin, but it's linear. You start from the top and you work your way down. And then between battles, you can essentially go from one mode to the next mode without actually waiting for your battle results. And I will definitely tell you the results of these missions do take a while and it's based on the way they're implementing Chainlink. And of course, you can read the details of the mission as well as the mission results. It's kind of interesting, especially for those who enjoy lore, right? Getting into these worlds, using your imagination. Like I said, animations for some of these games, at least one, are definitely on the way, but you've definitely got to use your imagination, much like some of these other blockchain crypto games where you essentially don't see any battle animations, but you sure do see rewards in your wallet. So let's keep going. So the second game mode is Polygalactic Hunter. Similar to Bounty Hunter, of course, you have to go and buy your hunter. In this case, you're actually going to use GBNT, which you earned from winning battles in Bounty Hunter, right? Same deal. You can take a look at your profile. Everything is there. You die. You just keep building and building and building. You select missions. Now, the missions here are a little different, but if you scroll down, you'll notice there are still missions that you can use essentially with G pull or GBNT, but also your level is very important. So even if you die, you can continue to level up. So we're going to jump into this one right here and just see it's pretty simple. Again, like I said, use your imagination, but the rewards are there. If you've got like a successful mission, great success or mediocre success, you can see the amount of GBNT or GPOL or USDT or whatever reward you're going to receive just like that. There are a few things to note about Poly Pulsar, this intergalactic sci-fi experience. They use Chainlink's VRF. OK, so that is the verification of randomness. Essentially, Chainlink generates a random number and cryptographic proof 
and the proof is published and verified on chain before it is used by any applications. So some games perhaps don't use this VRF technology. So there is a security issue potentially in some of these crypto games that we're using because essentially Chainlink's VRF does cost a little more. Essentially, first you pay the contract and send your hunter. And then a second transaction takes place from Chainlink's side to produce RNG, which is random number generation. This is completely beyond the control of the players. And they have already paid the money and sent their hunters. So they have absolutely no control over the result. You'll also notice that there's this statistic here that says player edge, okay? That is trying to show you the type of situation you should expect in terms of rewards. So if it's really low, the more you play this, it's essentially the higher the chance of you losing money. But if it's higher than 100%, for example, then you're pretty much always in the profit. But try it out for yourself and see the rewards for yourself. I think it's actually pretty cool. You'll even notice down here that you can actually narrow down the types of missions based on certain tokens that you may want to receive. So you read the details of the mission. Of course, you start the mission, of course, do the transaction, and you may have to wait several minutes. So let's jump into the next mode and come back and check our results after. So we're now getting into Pulse Arena, and this is where you want to get your own pet. Now we're going to battle these pets, level them up, of course, earn rewards, and to buy them, they cost GBNT. Again, you earn GBNT by playing Bounty Hunter, right? So you choose whichever you want. Just like the others, you can essentially name them and check the leaderboard right here because we want to see how well we're doing because we want some of that payout at the end. So we can check our pet info again, very similar statistics, but you keep going. Like I said, keep going, keep leveling up and keep those wins going because you'll do better in the leaderboards. Now this is a PVP mode, so you might actually be waiting for a little while for somebody to join. But like I said before, the good thing is that you can jump from mode to mode while you're waiting for battle results, or in this case, while you're waiting for somebody else to jump in and join you for this battle. Let's check out the results of the battle and kind of see how the battle plays out. Why not? Take a look. It hurts to lose, but sometimes you do. And again, if you die, you've just got to start again and buy a new one. But again, you can start from the very top at Bounty Hunter, you know, use your G pull, earn some GBNT, trickle down into Poly Galactic Hunter, buy your Hunter, do the missions, win more GBNT, and then of course get into Pulse Arena again, buy a new pet, and do the PvP again. And the PvP really is the main thing because you essentially want to win some of that pot. So let it trickle down, jump into the yield farms and the pools and stuff to earn some other tokens as well. For those who are new to the game or even those who have played it in the past, perhaps the alpha or the beta version, and this is the gamma level that we're at right now, you'll notice that they've got poly roll, so there's coin flip, dice roll, roulette, things of that nature. There's more games, more ways to play to earn. So again, chain link RNG is integrated for security, so results may take a bit, as I said, there is a token burn and it's essentially the token tax, which is burned. G pull has an 8% transfer tax to limit swing trades, but it's used essentially to play the games, as I said, right? Keeping it within the ecosystem. Yield farms must have at least two tokens. So there's the main token plus the master chef token, essentially in this case, G pull and GBNT. Deposit fees from farming are used for player edge rewards as well. Oftentimes some of these partners are aggregators or farms themselves. I also have to say that there is no vesting shadow. So anything that is a reward is directly deposited right away now they were once again like i said on the binance smart chain but they moved because the transaction fees are negligible on polygon compared to binance it's actually quite amazing to see how far one actual matic will go i personally haven't even had to add any more matic to my account and i've been playing for days just off of one matic it's so cool again you want to cycle your tokens reinvest in yield farming to earn g pull and essentially do it all over again once you get into this game it's very difficult to find yourself losing to the point where you can't continue playing you earn enough to invest more to gain more to keep going of course you use gbnt to earn other tokens and use it for other features as well now this is something that's very big i did mention this before all the games here are pieces of something bigger we got PVP and PVE going on. 
So the developers of Poly Pulsar have a game in the works. It's an MMO RPG style game with sandbox elements, animated missions instead of simply reading, which is completely fine as well for those who are into lore. It will be off chain. There's going to be an NFT marketplace that's going to be added. All right. Now, the thing is, Poly Pulsar is getting more sophisticated and they essentially can't seem to fit everything into on chain smart contracts. Oracles will be utilized to communicate off and on chain, as you know, similar to something like Axie Infinity, for example. Right. And there's also one more quick thing to note, and that's Rug Doc. OK, so they've got this Rug Doc. Essentially, it's to help us gamers and offer some type of insurance in case these guys decide to pull the plug. Like I said, speaking with one of the members of the team, I highly doubt that's what they're into because they're creating this launchpad idea. They're looking to introduce new tokens and new gamers to new tokens. It's actually such an interesting ecosystem. I think they're doing their best to essentially maintain this or to support this or to nurture it. I can see this being around for a while because there's simply not as much attention on gaming with Polygon compared to Binance Smart Chain. And I also have to note that Rug Doc deals with volunteers. So people are really dedicated to this. It's really interesting. These volunteers essentially help to define risks with projects to help avoid rug pulls and other scams. Now, the member of the team here for Poly Pulsar that I spoke to is actually a rug doctor admin. I'd say that this game or this gaming ecosystem has quite a bit of potential going forward, especially since the rest of the crypto space is waking up to DeFi gaming. Additionally, I would recommend taking a look at their audit report. They're very transparent in the sense of showing you that there were some issues found, some were resolved. One of the bigger concerns is that the game is heavily centralized according to this document here. And essentially the private keys can be misused in some way because there is some reconfiguring being done to the game. This could all be in an attempt to improve the game overall. So let's keep an eye out and use some real strategy when you play. Let's win together. Come on. Thank you again for checking this one out. Of course, you know the situation. NFT shorts again, the home of NFTs and cryptos. Look, blockchain freedom. Let's play these games. Let's get paid. But let's enjoy ourselves, right? Because that's really what it's all about. The community is getting stronger. The crypto space is getting more and more adoption. And we want to make sure that when they come in, that they've got this type of content to help them out, to catch them up. So again, join us. Telegram, Patreon, Twitter. You definitely want to join us there. Catch me on Facebook and Instagram. All the best to you. Take it easy. Until next time.